guys, welcome back to my channel. Surprise, surprise, I have a new eyeshadow palette to share with you guys today. In all honesty, I had no intentions of picking up this eyeshadow palette, but I happened to be in a Sephora last week. I went in initially to pick up another shade of the Kosas foundation, and I saw this eyeshadow palette in the front of the store. This is the first time I had seen it in person. I've seen it like floating around online. I've seen people kind of mentioning it and talking about it. I, of course, am talking about the new Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. Probably is not surprising to you guys at all that I ended up with this thing. I cannot seem to stay away from these eyeshadow palettes, despite the fact that I'm always simultaneously raving about and complaining about how much of a sucker I am for these Natasha Denona palettes. This one in person really was something special. So we're gonna go through it today. I've actually already used it. I've had it for about a week now. I've used it a few times. I'm gonna share with you guys some swatches. We're gonna be doing two eyeshadow looks with it today. And I'll explain to you why this palette drew me in. We're also gonna go through a couple of comparisons. I'll be honest, I don't have any palettes in my collection that are like real close dupes, but some might have like little nods to the color story in this palette. So we're gonna do all that together today. I actually have a new sample mascara that we're gonna be trying out as well. So this one should be fun. Hope you guys are excited about it. Before we get into the palette, the makeup, I wanna welcome any new visitors here. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Also make sure your notifications are turned on so that you know every time I upload a new video. And with that said, let's just get right into the palette. All right, you guys. So here it is. First off, I mean the packaging, which I, I knew this thing had beautiful packaging. Honestly, I feel like her packaging is getting better and better. She used to just the really plain, simple packaging, which I love that as well. But now she's like doing these little designs. I love the ombre and the pastel palette. I kind of love the splatters in her dream palette that she did. This one though might take the cake. Look at this little like ombre and the minty swirl. And then of course here is the color story inside oh my goodness you guys if you felt like the pastel palette was just maybe a little bit too loud of a color story for you even though it is pastels this one i feel like is a good like happy it's a happy place if you like a little bit of color but you're also somewhat afraid of color at the same time which i feel like perfectly describes me this is a great color story because the colors that you get in here are very, very soft, very toned down. The greens are more of like a bluish green that aren't obnoxiously blue or obnoxiously green. They're right there in the middle. They're just really fun and flattering and nothing's overly bold. You get some pinks, some neutrals. So I'll insert for you guys right here, a close up of the packaging and of the swatches. Of course, you can see how this thing looks all swatched, how the shades compare to each other. It is lovely, is it not? When this palette came out, honestly, I don't know the release. I probably should have looked this up. Don't mind my ignorance. I'm sure some of you guys can answer this down below, but did the My Dream palette come out before this one? I honestly don't know for sure. I've really been like taking a break from social media, from Instagram for a while, from trend mood and that sort of thing. So I don't know which one came out first, but I feel like these came out, it felt like within days of each other, very, very close together, which is why this one, I just thought, I mean, I had just bought the My Dream palette and I thought, you know what? I'm not even gonna really look deeply at this palette because I just don't need another 68. I mean, how much are these now? 68, $69 eyeshadow palette in my life. And therein lies one of the dilemmas that I'm always dealing with. I mean, I do make videos on YouTube. It's not any surprise that I buy a lot of eyeshadow palettes. That's kind of part of what my channel is about. And of course I love eyeshadow palettes, so it's a great excuse. But I also, I do spend my own money on my, on my eyeshadow palettes. I do not get a lot of PR. The makeup I buy, I buy with my own money. And as a mom, as someone that's constantly like, price checking things and thinking about budgeting. It's hard for me to balance these two sides of, I don't know if I'd say my personality, but the side of me that's a little bit more frugal with the side of me that loves to review makeup for you guys and also for myself. And I also, I, I like high-end makeup, but there was a time that I never would have bought this sort of thing. And if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would not be buying these eyeshadow palettes. So I feel like I'm always conflicted. I'm sure it comes across in these videos. Perhaps it's even a bit annoying to some of you guys because I'm kind of like saying these are so expensive and I can't believe I buy these, but then I buy every single one of them. The only reason I even mention that is because I realize it's kind of a contradiction. And if you love eyeshadow palettes, if you've been into makeup for a while, you probably have a pretty large eyeshadow palette collection as well. And how many of us actually need makeup? probably not many of us. So that dilemma is always there for me. I just wanted to get that off my chest because I feel like I'm always kind of battling these contradictory feelings. So let's take another peek at the Retro Glam palette. You guys, this is really, really pretty. I have been using it again for, the, for about a week now. I think I've had it for like a week and two days and I've used it quite a bit, not every day, but I've used it quite a bit since then. And man, you guys, I am really enjoying it. If you like soft kind of teal, I mean, they're blue toned green. So these are very blue minty 
greens in here, both the darker and the lighter shades. They all have a bit of blue in them, but it's like this perfect soft mint chocolate chip kind of color that I think is so beautiful and so fun. And honestly, I didn't know I liked until I got this palette. When I did see this palette in person, and again, you guys, I, I'm telling you, it literally was like this. I walked into Sephora, I saw this sitting there at the front, I actually was with a couple other eyeshadow palettes, including the Empowered Eyeshadow Palette by Huda Beauty, the My Dream Palette by Natasha, but it was like a light came down and shone on this specific palette. Everything else was blurred out and I could hear Angel singing. It just drew me in. I mean, the color story of this one in person really surprised me how much I love this. So of course I had to pick it up. This is one of the palettes that I picked up for myself. I mean, a lot of times I'll pick up an eyeshadow palette for the channel. Not that I don't love all eyeshadow palettes, I do, but I often use that as an excuse, but this is one simply that I wanted to get home and just play with for me. I do think the colors in this one, while not exactly the same, they kind of nod a little bit to the Nouveau palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. They are by no means exactly the same, but they have some similarities as far as the vibe that they give. They have a good amount of neutrals in them, a soft amount of color, some pastels. So I'm just gonna show you these side by side. Again, they're not exactly the same. In fact, I don't even know if there's a single shade in these that are duplicates of each other, but they just have a similar vibe. The Nouveau palette, the greens are not quite as minty and blue toned, and the pinks are not quite as pastel, but again, you have some roses, some greens, some pastels, some bronzes, similar things in here, just like slightly different and obviously more shades. We'll look at some of those specifics. I also have a couple ColourPop palettes here I wanna do some comparisons to, a Huda Beauty palette, but we will do that at the end. Now I'm gonna zoom you guys in and we will get into look number one. So let's kick it off with this this light pink right here. This is the shade Holly. Beautiful, beautiful soft pink. By the way, I do obviously have the rest of my makeup on. I will link everything that I'm wearing down below for you guys. So the shade's going pretty wide. I'm gonna run it underneath my lash line. Just look how soft that color is. It's so soft and pretty. Hmm. Love it. Now we're gonna build up a little bit more depth. Let's take this pink right here. You guys, I'm sorry about my voice. I really need to like suck on a lozenge or something. This one we're gonna pop right in the socket. So a little bit lower, all the way across. Now we're gonna take a little bit of this shimmery rose color right here. This is the shade Flare. We're gonna pop this on the outer half of the lid. Now I wanna take this color right here. It's just a really nice, kind of cool tone, taupey brown. It reminds me of a shade that you would probably find in the, in the original Glam palette. This one I'm going to take on the inner third of the lid and then overlap towards the center, that pink shade. It's kind of a different combination. Okay, and now I want to take one of these two shades and use it to kind of smudge that outer corner. Let's take this one. I think I want the deeper shade. So I think for this, I'm gonna use an angled liner brush. I'm gonna dip into that shade. It is a shimmer, but I want a little bit more precision out of it. So we're gonna take this and kind of just smudge it along the upper lash line, do a bit of a wing with it. I'm actually gonna pull just a tiny bit down below at the lower lash line. Now I'm gonna go in with a larger brush, this kind of smudge brush right here. I think I want that a little bit less defined, a little bit more smudgy. So I'm gonna kind of feather it up and in. And now just for fun, let's add a pop of this color right here, which is a very, very beautiful, super, super sparkly champagne. So I wanna add just a pop of this on the inner corner, the inner tear duct. Okay, and now I'm going to add a nice healthy coat of mascara. I have this sample from Cali Ray. This is a tubing mascara. I'm gonna apply this, then I'll zoom you guys out. We'll take a final look, and then we'll move on to look number two. 
All right, and here is the first look all finished. This is just using some of the pinks and the taupes. Very pretty, very subtle, very simple. I love this taupe color on the inner lid. Such a great lid shade. Love the bronze kind of shimmery shade in the outer corner. That bronze and that pink together kind of makes this like smoky purple that I absolutely love. I also really like the mascara. I'm excited to wash this off. It's supposed to be a tubing mascara, so I'm excited to see how it removes. So I'm going to go remove look number one, and then we're gonna dip into some of the mint greens. All right, for my second look, we're gonna start off in this shade right down here. This is the shade Lucy. Just a really light, light kind of beige. This is like a barely there kind of shade, but you'll see it gives my, it gives me just this subtle tint of like a grayish color. It's really pretty actually, I love the shade. All right, now let's start building up some of this mint green color. I'm gonna take that same blending brush and we're gonna add this color right to the socket and then we're gonna pull it down over the lid as well. Just like the outer half of the lid. Then we're gonna to move to a smaller blending brush with that same shade just on the very edge of this brush. We're gonna run a little bit of this mint color on the lower lash line, just about halfway across. All right, now we're gonna build a little bit of this green into the socket just to deepen up this green color right on this outer half of the socket. See how that's gonna Slightly deepen it up, but it keeps that kind of like bluish mint color. So pretty. Now we're gonna take this shade up here. This is shade Evergreen, which is a cream to powder formula. Let me just give this one a swatch for you guys. You can see it's this like kind of bold, medium tone, teal color, really nice creamy formula. We're gonna build that up in the outer corner. And also a little bit along the lash line as well. So just starting right here, this is that same small blending brush corner actually let's move over to a denser brush the smudgy brush I just find these work a little bit quicker with this formula I like something a little bit more dense I'm just gonna deepen up this teal color run a little bit of what is left on my brush without adding more just pull it down below so I have a good shape right there all right, now let's start adding some shimmer. So let's start with this one in the corner down here. It's the darkest green shimmer, the shade Oz. We're gonna apply this on the outer third of the lid, stopping just shy of this outermost corner where I put that teal color. So we're gonna do a nice ombre with these three greens, with this, this, and then this green. Now let's dip into this shade, the shade Marlin, which is just a step lighter. This is a good like mid-tone, very soft mint green, very reflective, nice and brightening. Apply this one right across the center. All right, you could put that shade all the way across the lid, but I do wanna show you guys this shade right here, which is a very icy mint color. It's like a white mint, it's so pretty. So this one we're gonna pop on the inner third of the lid and overlap that shade we put in the center. So you see we have this kind of like gradation from light to not really dark, but to mid-tone. Minty all the way across, but varying shades of mint, which I love. I just think that makes the prettiest look. If you're into the color mint, you're gonna love this palette. Okay, normally I would just leave it right there, but I wanna add just a little bit more like punch to the lower lash line. So we're gonna run some of that icy color on just my inner tear duct on the bottom. So I'm gonna take this tiny little brush right here, this little pinpoint brush from Refer, this is the 23, and we are going to run this right along the inner tear duct and just this very, very inner like third of the inner rim right here. Just for a nice pop of brightness. Okay, let's do one last thing. I wanna dip into this shade right here, which is like the taupey kind of purpley, I don't know what would you call this shade. Very pretty kind of charcoaly taupe. It's called Maxi. We're gonna run a little bit of this. It is a shimmer right below the outer half of the lower lash line, right by the lashes. All right, last thing, I'm gonna take just a little bit of my Wet n Wild liner. I'm just gonna line the upper waterline just on the outer half. 
And then a couple coats of my Cali Ray mascara. By the way, this did remove very, very easily. It just came right off. I didn't think it was quite as tubey as my Thrive Cosmetics mascara, but it did remove very easily. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about this so far. I'll keep you guys posted on how this goes. So this is it. Love this one. I love monochromatic makeup looks. I love this tone of teal. I mean, I don't know what you'd call this. Like teal, mint, as much as I'm kind of afraid of green eyeshadow and blue eyeshadow. The mix of the two done the right way makes such a pretty color. Love how this look turned out. I've been really enjoying these shades in this palette. I actually don't own a ton of shades like this in my collection with the exception of some individual shadows I have from Sydney Grace that I really love that kind of remind me of these tones, but I don't know that I have any mints like this from Sydney Grace in a shimmer formula. So a lot of these shades are pretty unique to me. I think the combination of the shades together, the pinks, the browns, the taupes, and then the minty green, are very, very unique as far as the color story goes. So if that is your thing, I think you're gonna love this one. If $69 is outside of your price range, hang tight and cross your fingers. Maybe send an email to Alter Ego. I'm hoping that they will dupe this one. This one is very, very highly rated right now. I think it has near perfect five-star reviews on Sephora's website. I know a lot of people have been really loving this one and I can now understand why. It is really, really great. So let's really quickly just go through a couple comparisons. I'll tell you guys right now, I don't have a palette in my collection that is really even super close to this, but I have a couple that it kind of reminded me of. So I just want to walk you through a couple of those. First off, some of the rosy pinks in here reminded me a little bit of the Huda Beauty Nude Light palette. I love this little palette. So I have these kind of like rosy colors right here that are somewhat similar to some of these. I mean, even this rosy shimmer is a little bit similar to this one in the corner right here. Not exact. There they are right there. This one is the Natasha. This one is the Huda Beauty one. Not exactly the same, but somewhat similar. Kind of felt the same way as far as some of the rosier colors as the Blush Crush palette. Kind of similar vibes. So another one of the palettes I thought of when looking at some of the grains in here is I wondered how these compared to the, the Child palette from ColourPop, the Mandalorian palette. So I have it right here. If you, I don't know if you can tell from first glance, they're, they're not the same. I mean, these shades, other than that one in the middle, which does have a little bit of blue in it, is still not quite as blue toned as the mints inside here. Let's just do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. So here is the mint in the middle, and then I don't know which one to compare it to. Probably, probably this one right here. Let's compare it to this one. Why don't we just do a swatch of both of these? So here's the one in the Mandalorian palette. Actually, it's probably closer to this one. This is the darker one in the Retro Glam and the lighter one in the Retro Glam. So there are those shades. Actually, it's quite similar to this one, more than I thought. So I don't know. I guess you could say, there we go. So once we swatch them, I know these swatches are kind of terrible, but there's that one right there, which has a little bit more of a yellow tone to it while it's still a mintier shade has a little bit more yellow a little bit less blue than the natasha shades right there so you can see they're not exactly the same and the same goes for some of the shimmers in here they just are a little bit more yellow in tone and then one more quick comparison i want to do is with the anastasia palette again no exact dupes inside here but i do just want to compare this shimmery i'd almost call this one more of a silver than a mint but let's just do a quick little swatch of this one so here it is we'll swatch it over on this hand so there you see, it's somewhat minty, but it has a little bit of like bronze and silver in it as well. Let's compare that one to this shade in the corner. This is the one I put on the center of my lid. And hopefully you'll be able to see how much more blue this shade has in it. So there it is right there. Somewhat similar, but hopefully you can see. Let me turn my lights down a little bit. Can you see how this one has a bit more blue in it? But I still feel like they have a similar vibe. So if you're on a budget, if you can afford this one, or if you're maybe wondering if you already own this one, do you need this one? Eh, I mean, they're not the same, but maybe this one could kind of hold you over if you don't have the money or just don't want to invest in a $69 eyeshadow palette right now. I hate using that word invest. It is not an investment. Makeup is never an investment. Someone left a comment for me once saying, makeup is not an investment. The value never goes up. That's absolutely true. But for some reason we like to call it that sometimes, maybe to make us feel better about the fact that we spend money on stupid things. So that's really all the comparisons I have for you guys. Pretty unique palette. I don't have a whole lot like this within my collection. Let me know your thoughts on this eyeshadow palette. Is this one that you've had your eye on? Is it one that you looked over or maybe you just have no interest in? Maybe you're not into these minty green colors. If you're not, you're probably not gonna like this eyeshadow palette because there are a lot of them in here. But I think they're stunning. Very happy with this one so far. I'm excited to have it. It's one I've had so much fun playing 
struggling with lately, despite the fact that I know I don't need any more eyeshadow palettes in my life, which I seem to say every time I get a new one, but I am really enjoying this one right now. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts on this palette, good or bad, maybe you tried it and it didn't work out for you or you didn't like it, please let us know down in the comments below. Any of that would be helpful. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm sure this is a longer video. I hope you guys are all doing well. Let me give you one last reminder. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure to do that before you leave and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye. But once you take that wire off the Christmas lights when they're all wrapped up in that little like perfect column, you're never getting them back. I'd love to know your thoughts on mint ice cream, like mint chocolate chip or any sort of mint flavored ice cream. I used to ride my bike to our local Maverick, which was a gas station. If you're in Utah, you will be very familiar with where Maverick is. This is one of the old school Mavericks and they'd have a different flavor every day. And I think it was every Wednesday they would have the flavor mint. I would ride my bike like two miles to the Maverick to get a mint ice cream cone. It was one of my favorite things.